everybody, Jill from Two Dogs Media, introducing you to WordPress 5.5, which is scheduled to release the middle of August. I think right now it's slated for around August 11th. Um, I'm getting a little bit of a jump on this because I'm kind of excited about some of the things that they are bringing to the table and wanted to share them with you so you can plan accordingly. Um, or there's a couple of items you'll need to think about how you want to handle and there's a couple of things that I think you know you'll find really useful and maybe you'll want to start thinking about how you can use them. So let's get started. This is a sample page I did just using items that are core in WordPress now. Um, so they've added some block areas um, that now do columns, a little mini side-by-side -side image area, the header, um, this hero image with the text is something that now comes with or will come with WordPress. So these are all kind of neat. So a couple of things I really want to talk about first are lazy loading images and XML sitemaps. Both of these are now going to be core features in WordPress. And you have to think about how you want to uh, utilize these or if you even do. XML sitemaps, right off the bat, I'm guessing most of you will probably stick with what you are currently using. If you're using Yoast or if you're using Rank Math, you might not want to use XML sitemaps from the core and you can actually just use a function to deactivate it. Um, and you just place that code in your functions file. I have that in the post, so just copy paste it and then you don't have to worry about this. If you're currently not using a sitemap, then this might be a good option for you as it doesn't require any plugins. The only bad part about it is it does not um, have a sitemap for images or videos as of yet. I don't know if it's on the map, um, but that is the one downside to this. So for I know my clients, I'll probably just deactivate this and let them continue using whatever they're using. Lazy loading images. If you have a lazy loading images plugin only, if that plugin only does this one thing, then I would say remove it and just use what the core is giving you. If you're using a lazy loading image plugin that also does other things like the optimization um, or the compression of your images, then you might want to keep that and get rid of um, the core. So I haven't found the code yet. There's still, again, you know, it's still a month out. I'm hoping they'll just write a simple snippet where you can actually deactivate the lazy loading uh, core aspect of things. So those are the two things that you kind of need to think about and plan for. Um, you don't want to have multiple site maps. You don't want to have multiple lazy loading images. Um, this is all bloated code that you don't need. So think about it now and you'll be ready when it launches in August. Image cropping. Okay, I, I'm going to reiterate this. I know I say this a lot. Guys, please make sure you are cropping and optimizing your images before you upload them to your website. So the goal is to keep your website as light as possible, both on server side and on user side. Um, and the only way to do that is by making sure they're sized properly before you even upload them. The image cropping feature is not going to decrease your image size. What it's going to do is just change the look and feel of the image. Um, it's really kind of a neat tool. I'm going to show you how it works. So let's jump down. We're going to add an image block. And media library. We're going to add this guy here. Okay, this is Skylar. He's a pretty awesome dude. I love this picture. I don't like this big white messy thing area here. I'm going to do crop. Okay. And when you click on this image, this is your aspect ratio options. They're going to give you the original landscape portrait square. My original is a horizontal image, so it's pretty much going to be along the lines of a landscape. So say if I want to make it, you know, four to three, nothing changes there. Um, 16 to nine, you can see the top and the bottom will be cropped out and we'll just be left with what's in the middle. You can do a portrait, left and right will be cropped out. But I know for this one, I want to do a square. So I'm going to click on square. And then I can drag and drop where I want him to be cropped at. So you can see the white will be gone. He's nice and center. I'm going to click apply. And how long it takes to crop is based on the image size. Small images crop really fast. They no normally won't be this long for the cropping. It's just this is a big image. It's a dummy site, so I don't care about image size. So there's my crop. Looks good. Everything is pretty. Now if I click on this again, there's a couple more options. I can now rotate him. That's one. And then I can also zoom. So say, for example, I'm doing a post on dog fighting um, and I want to showcase, you know, that sometimes dog fighters will actually pull out dog's teeth 
um, when they use them as bait dogs in a dog fight. So you can see I scaled up 205% so I can show that he has no teeth. Um, and that's why I kind of fell in love with him. He has been through a horrific past, but he still stays positive and happy and loving. So the dogs just amaze me. Um, so this is just a great, just to, you know, use creatively, you know, how you can use this tool. And for me, this was a perfect example of why I would want to use this. So click apply. And you can see now I got this beautifully square cropped image, focuses on his teeth, and I can do a whole thing about why dog fighters suck. So that is the image cropping tool. So the next thing we're going to talk about is the auto updating. This is a new feature. I don't know if I like it or not. Um, auto updating scares me. I do not automatically update plugins or themes when they first come out um, because I'm afraid of issues. So I don't know if many of you are aware, uh, a while back Yoast had an issue with the images where they somehow changed settings for a whole lot of people and they wound up with thousands and thousands of new pages just for their images, which obviously has a huge effect on your SEO. Uh, there was another plugin recently that hurt a lot of food bloggers. It was a grow media, a grow social media plugin. Um, they just had a really bad update that affected a lot of people. Um, so when you do these auto updates and you don't know if there's issues happening, there could be residual damage. And that's why I'm a little tentative to use this. So for example, yes, Yoast might make a ch might have did an update yesterday. Yesterday, a lot of people found out, oh my God, this was really bad and this happened. So Yoast puts out an update today. You're set to auto update. So yes, it updated yesterday. The issues happened on your website. Then it auto updated the next day with the change that the developer might have made. The problem is you don't know that your site was affected because you're not keeping up with what's going on. So that's why I'm a little leery of auto update. If you're going to use this, please use caution. You should always keep an eye on what updates are happening on a plugin, especially ones that mess with SEO. So if you're going to do this, okay, you just go into your plugins and you can see automatic updates. You can disable or enable. With things like a Kismet or you know anything that's not really SEO heavy, it's not going to be an issue. Um, it's just SEO is everything, and if you screw up your SEO, it's hard to fix it. Um, I have a lot of food blogger clients, and they're really hurting from this grow issue. Um, so it's you know it's just kind of a waiting thing. Um, there's still people with the Yoast issue that still have image pages indexed that they just can't get rid of. So um, just be really careful if you're going to do auto updates. For the themes, it's the same thing. You go into themes theme details, and then you can disable or enable from here. Again, same thing. Please make sure you know your theme developer. Some, m most, I would say, do update with no issues, but you just want to be cautious. Um, so if you're going to use an un enable updates, it is there. Just use caution. Okay. There was also some accessibility updates for that are coming in 5.5, mostly with lists. Um, you guys should really be checking your site for accessibility. Um, there has been more lawsuits. This is a great thing that WordPress is really keeping up on this stuff. Um, just this is an important aspect of things, so it is something you should invest in at least once a year to get like an accessibility audit. Um, we don't do those. You'd have to find another company, but um, I do recommend those if you can't fix things yourself. But they did do some updates for that. Redirect guessing. I think a lot of you might not even know what this is. I don't know if you've ever seen it where maybe you typed in a URL. Say I did a URL for my site, you know, red dash shoes. Maybe that page doesn't exist anymore, but it took me to red dash shoes dash four dash children. Um, and maybe I don't want it to go there. Maybe I want it to go to a different page. Um, this is a little bit different than 301 redirects um, as, you know, WordPress has no idea really where that person is supposed to go. So it's making a guess for you. Um, so now there's just a little bit more control over that. I don't think many of you will use that feature, but it's there and it is kind of a useful feature. Um, so that's it for like the main things. Um, a couple other things that are kind of new. I don't know if you've noticed, if you're already using Gutenberg, everything just looks a little bit different. Um, they really did kind of clean up the admin a little bit, make it stronger and bolder. Um, so there's minor updates there. Under preview now, you have some uh, desktop, tablet, and mobile. You still have the preview new tab, which is probably what most of you are using. If I click on mobile, you've got this like right in here now, which is cool. So this will let me see what it's going to look like in mobile so I can make some quick changes. 
Okay. And we'll see that it's still early. I know there's still some um, glitches with this. Um, it'll be interesting for me to see as a developer how effective this really is. But I think for now, it'll really give you a good visual if everything's looking okay. Um, gives you the mobile, the tablet, and then you can just go back to desktop. Okay, so those are some of the items. Um, now we're going to talk a little bit about how the blocks have changed. So everything on this page, again, was built with core blocks. It's a little bit new now how they're doing it. So up here, there was always an add block button, but they've changed it. So when you click add block, now you're going to see three different sections. You may only see two. If you don't have reusable blocks, you won't, of course, see this. I do use reusable blocks actually quite a bit. Um, I love them, so I always have those. Patterns is new. Um, I'm still trying to wrap my head around how patterns and reusable are different, um, and I will update my post once I dig a little deeper. Um, patterns is still being worked on, but right now these are the patterns that are going to come by default. Okay, so like this, and I hate the name pattern. I'm just going to say that. I just don't like that they're calling it a pattern. But this is a pattern block. Okay, I use the Sir Knight for this. Okay, can you see that text? And then there's a little paragraph, and I changed it to an image background. But you have another header. I do like that it's broken out, so I can see all my headers. I can see a text block. I have a gallery block. Okay, these are the columns with the buttons. These are columns with the images, and then there's a couple of uh, button options. So these are the ones to get you started. Okay, this is the gallery block here. Um, so that's another new thing. Okay, and then your blocks are also kind of separated into different categories now. So now I have my text blocks, media, design, and then if you have any plugins, like I'm using Ultimate Add-ons, those are going to be sectioned down here separately. So some cool stuff going on here. So let's go into... Um, I'm going to add a pattern so you can see how this looks. I'm going to do the header because I get the feeling a lot of people are going to like this. You know, we'll do Sir Knight again. Okay, so now I have my Sir Knight block, and you can click this to close it. Okay, click on the block, open your block side, and now you can see all your options. So, minimum height, so this is considered a cover block. Maybe I want to do something really, really big, 800. Okay, and you can see it changes the pixels. So you can play around with that. I'm just going to do 200 for this example. Okay. Then you can see your color options. So this one's using a gradient. I can change the gradient to whatever I want. And you can do custom gradients. I have a tutorial about how, how to add um, default colors and gradients as well. So there's, a pl uh, there's tools that will give you presets so you can make sure your brand is on par. You can change the setting. You can change the angle if you want it differently. You can make it a solid color. Okay, and when you click on the text, then you have some more options for the text. Okay, so this is all really cool stuff. Okay, and what about if you wanted to use an image? Click clear, do media library. Uh, we'll do this guy. Actually, let's do these two. And then select. Okay, now you can see they're cut off here. I don't want them to be cut off. I don't want their pretty faces missing. So I can use the focal point picker to change the layout of it. You can make it a fixed background. I don't usually use this too often. Um, but you can if you want. Okay, so you got that. And then you can even, if you want to, do an overlay. So you can do a gradient overlay. Reduce the opacity. Maybe we'll do blue. We'll do text. We'll make this text white. Okay, so and that is your block. Okay, you can center the text, center it at the top, center it at the bottom, left. So you have all these new options now to help you improve the layout of these different sections. If you want to do something else, maybe you want to add another column or maybe some buttons. Um, I actually do like this, two buttons. I actually use these a lot on my review posts, uh, two different buttons. So I kind of like that they're doing this now. Um, so I can go here. I'm going to close this. Um, so this button. Okay, you can see the background color is black. Maybe I want to change it to, let's do blue. 
and then button two, you can make it different. This is an outline button. So each button could have its own unique color, which is really cool. Now there's still some glitches because I know I just changed this to gray. I don't know if you noticed, it doesn't show gray here, but it does show it on the front end as gray. It's gray here. So now you have those as options as well. So these are just some of the things I love about 5.5. Again, I am going to continue adding to the post as new feature, as the features keep getting built out and I'll be adding more code. If you have any questions at all on anything, you know how to reach me and I hope this was a little bit helpful and you're as excited as I am. Thanks guys. Have a great day.